So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I troubleshot and replaced one bad fuel injector. So the code that I was getting was a 201, uh, which leads to cylinder one fuel injector. Um, when I removed it, I was getting the correct resistance reading, and uh, I just wanted to make sure that it was bad. So I basically just swapped the fuel injector uh, one and three, and the problem did carry over. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just remove the negative battery, uh, negative terminal from the battery. Um, and then I'm going to get started uh, working on everything else up top. So the first thing that I need to do is remove this uh, air intake box. So there's two, uh, I forget what T number they are, but they're star head uh, screws that are down in the front. So there's one on this side and then there's one on the opposite side. And uh, the good thing about these screws is they do stay in the box themselves, so you don't have to worry about them getting lost. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is remove this hose, and then there's another screw in the back for another clamp, uh, which connects to the actual throttle body. So once you loosen that, um, there is also going to be a connector on the side that the hose goes through right here. So I'm just going to remove this connector and then this thing should basically slide right out. Um, you have to maneuver it a little bit, but it comes out pretty easy. So the next thing uh, we need to do is bleed the fuel rail. So uh, before I do that, let me just show you real quick. So the way that the cylinders go is, uh, so cylinder one, two, three, four, five, six. So I was getting initially a code on cylinder one, um, and I removed that fuel injector and I put it in cylinder three, and then I pulled a new code and it did switch from one to three, so I'm pretty confident that it is the fuel injector itself. So this is the fuel rail here, this is the main fuel line that comes in. We're not going to disconnect this, uh, we need a special tool to be able to remove that, which I don't have. So. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to remove some of these um, coils for the spark plugs, just enough to be able to lift this up. Um, there's also a couple of other bolts that need to come off. Um, but I'm mostly going to be focused on this side here because I just need to replace this one here. First thing we're going to do is bleed the fuel line. So this is the, the fuel rail here. And if you look here, there's like a little plastic cap. I'm just going to take that off. So this is the bleeder um, valve. So it's kind of just like a, a, a you know an air tube where it's got a little pin in it. You push the pin and it'll bleed it. And I'll do it with a rag. And uh, also watch your eyes when you're doing this. Okay, so I really don't have to do anything else on this side. Uh, what we'll do is go on to the other side and start taking that apart. Okay, so let's take out these coils first. Okay, so basically what I needed to do was uh, take off these uh, coils here, number uh, one and three. So these are just two, uh, two 10 millimeters. Um, the connector, you can see here, you just push down on this and it just pulls right out. Um, this, uh, this is the connector for, for the fuel injector itself. You can see it has this little red flap tab. So you just lift that all the way up and then you push down on this black piece and then pull it out. All right, so I can take these out. So this has already been disassembled, so it's going to come out pretty easy. So I can remove, remove these. Uh, what I also want to do is take out these two bolts here that hold this fuel rail. So there's one back here and one here. And again, these are 5 sixteenths. Uh, so if we take a look, we can see the uh, fuel injector that we're going to replace. So it's this one here. And this guy has a little clip that I already removed. Um, but it looks just like this one here. So once I have these unbolted, um, like I said, this was already removed. So you can see how easily it lifts up. 
it didn't lift up that easily on the first try. So I pretty much had to get something underneath it and kind of just pry it up a little bit. Um, but you can see that's loose. I've already removed the clip from this guy here. So one thing I wanted to point out is these fuel injectors have uh, rubber bushings on the top and the bottom. So when you're removing these, uh, just make sure that um, they don't get stuck either in the engine block or the fuel rail itself. Um, and also when I removed these initially, I did use some uh, oil um, just to kind of loosen them up a little bit. And then when I reinstalled the uh, new one, I also you know added some oil just so it um, seated properly. And uh, the engine block too, I just gave it a little bit of a cleaning um, after I removed Okay, so here is the new injector. Um, you can see I did put a little bit of oil on this bushing that goes into the engine block as well as the one on the top. So um, one thing that I wanted to point out is that if you take a look at this image, you could see that these are, or at least cylinder one, is not fully seated. So after I got everything positioned and bolted down, I did go back over them and just give them a little tap down just to make sure that they were seated properly um, which is pretty important you also want to make sure that when it's all put back together that you check it to make sure that it's not leaking fuel um, so yeah this is uh, you can see fuel injector 3 is in pretty good but uh, fuel injector 1 needs to be seated a little bit more okay so now that the bad fuel injector has been replaced I'm just gonna go back and uh, reinstall everything that I removed so two bolts for the fuel rail uh, the two coils for the spark plugs um, once I tighten up the fuel rail uh, to the engine block I'm just gonna go over the fuel injectors themselves and make sure that they're properly seated there's also a retaining clip that holds the fuel injector to the fuel rail so I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall that but uh, overall, it wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, I did fix the problem without any issue. Uh, I've been driving it for a couple days now, and there's uh, no issue at all. So um, yeah, I was able to do it without removing the entire fuel rail. Um, you know, at some point, I'll probably do all of them. But uh, it was around the holiday, and it was kind of difficult to actually get the part. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Enjoy the uh, rest of the video. If it was helpful, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching.